For content information and the link to the written version of this story, please check the description. This is especially encouraged for this story because it depicts some rather graphic imagery. Today's story is titled What's in the Dark and is based on the oral tradition of the legend of the Boogeyman, which started in England in the 1500s, but also has its roots in several other countries and cultures. My stories are made as a hobby, and I don't earn any money from them. However, if you'd like to help out my channel and me, especially with my transition, if you didn't know I'm trans, you can help me out by going to my cash app and donating just a little bit, however you're comfortable with. My cash code is on the screen. It is pound sign 66 JJ99. I'll also leave a link in the description. Now back to the video and story. The candle was blown out and it forced young Devon into the night. His mother kissed him upon the forehead and left without saying a word. A stiff wind trapped a tree branch against his shutters. The boy shivered under his blanket not from the chill, but from his guilt. He had stolen some gooseberries from his neighbour's garden. Though he hadn't been caught, he felt the eyes of a caterpillar judging him from a nearby leaf. Guilt is your heart's way of telling you you've broken your understanding of morality. The guilt danced around Devon's chest, filling his lungs with tar and making it hard for him to breathe. Sleep was far from coming to this child. Car, a bird screeched from outside the window. Devon drew his blanket over his head and cowered from the sound. He knew if he had been honest, he wouldn't feel so scared. But sometimes the scariest thing to do is admit when you've done wrong. An orange light drenched the room. At first, Devon believed it was morning. Had he been in this grasp of distress all night and lost time? No, that couldn't be right. He pushed his cover down so he could see from at least one of his eyes. The light was coming from the distantmost corner of his room not from his candle, and not from his window. He gulped as he dragged his sheet down to his chest and clung to the fabric for security. He turned to face the light and a shadowy figure stood before it. Devon attempted to scream, but no sound escaped his throat. The figure opened its hand to reveal six fingers, each with a sharp dagger-like nail escaping from its tip. The demon placed its index finger to his lips, and with his other hand plucked a sack out from thin air. Devon dove back under his cover, begging for the creature to go away, apologising for his earlier misdeeds, but it was no use. The creature hovered a hand over his bed, and before he could even attempt to scream for help, Devon was in the sack. It had been a week since Devon's disappearance. His mother never stopped searching for him, despite what the other villagers claimed. Children disappear all the time, one would claim. Perhaps he floated away, said another. Devon's mother would not give up. She now sat with her neighbour Peg. I wouldn't worry too much about the matter. The woman placed her bite back in her mouth and inhaled. How are you so convinced? Devon's mother rubbed her tired eye as Peg sailed some smoke in her direction. I've seen this before. A child does something wrong. They go missing for a while and they return. Were you dealing with a bog? Devon's mother narrowed her heavy eyelids. Why didn't you mention this when we first went missing? Peg shrugged, assumed he'd run away or been killed or something. Devon's mother's jaw fell open in disgust. What? Peg took another smoke. We were all thinking it. Devon's mother shook her head. I wasn't, and my son, she tapped her index finger on the table in front of her, has done nothing bad in his life. Peg snorted. <laughs> Tell that to my missing gooseberry, sweetheart. She motioned to her gooseberry bush. He, he wouldn't. Devon's mother put her hand to her chest. Oh, he did. Saw him myself. He was on a dangerous path. Everyone knows stealing gooseberries leads to pilfering from nut thickets. A tear rolled down her cheek of Devon's mother. I'm sure he'll be fine. Peg laid her free hand over hers. Most bogs don't kill children. They just frighten them. We're not dealing with an iron-toothed Tom Dockin or Anis or a Green Teeth. They are the worst, let me tell you. Eating children is such an ugly trait, don't you think? 
Peg studied her face of the woman before her and cleared her throat upon realising she wasn't seeing the humour in the situation. What we are dealing with is more than likely spring eeled Jack. He kidnaps children and runs far away with them, carrying them in a sack, jumps over hedges, and that sort of thing. She smiled. You seem to know a lot about bogs. The tone of the statement took or was almost accusatory. Of course I do. I am a bog. Peg laughed. What? Devon's mother scrambled up from her chair. Relax yourself. I don't kidnap. I just watch naughty children. Your son made my job easier. Devon's mother pointed an angry finger at her neighbour as she shuffled backwards to get away. You're the reason my son is missing. Peg rolled her eyes. It's not my fault your child couldn't keep his grubby hands to himself. Perhaps you are the guilty one and should have been taken instead. Devon's mother ran away, covering her ear eyes as tears fell down her face. Was it something I said? Peg shrugged, taking another puff on her pipe. The mother trekked for days, with little food and water. She'd been tempted by a trail of breadcrumbs she found whilst wandering a wood, but she fought better of herself and continued on. What the bog had told her poisoned her mind. Devon was still out there, and she, as his mother, had to be the one to find him. Was it her fault her son had gone missing? Had gotten s- and gotten into such a mess? If so, she felt she needed to be the one to receive the punishment. Any caring mother would do the same, she told herself, and it was this mantra that kept her moving. She didn't know where to seek, but she followed her heart, and the heart always knows the way. Devon awoke on the ground, surrounded by an encircling of corn towering over him. He looked to the sky. It was a deep, pure darkness. Was this still the sack? He scrambled to his feet. The eyes of Jack looked down upon him. They almost covered the entire sky. A blood-red moon rested within the centre of his left eye. Where am I? Devon called to the heavens, now standing in the centre of the crop circle. A sharp wind brushed against the cornfield, bending the stalks towards the boy. No answer. Devon searched around him and found one stalk standing erect. He headed over and prepared himself to climb it. To his surprise, it was easy. But in no time he had reached the tip of the ear, he placed an uneasy foot on an open leaf which flattened out for him. Devon glanced down as the leaf platform lifted him into the air. An intricate crop circle lay below him. The platform stopped miles in the sky and sat before the blank eye of spring-heeled Jack. Devon! The voice came from everywhere at once. Do you know why you stand before me? Devon bowed his head, embarrassed. I, I stole gooseberries from our neighbour's garden. He lifted his chin. The green tint of guilt covered his face. Why are you hungry? Jack asked. Devon raised his eyes to meet the giant's eye of the beast. Why, yes, sir, I was. Jack considered this for a moment. Then I am done with you. Devon shook his head in confusion before a strong gust of wind threw him from the platform, sending him plummeting to the ground. Devon's mother rubbed her bloody fingers against her torn dress. She had just crawled through a garden of thorns, hoping to find her son. As she stood there, the sun cast down on her a brilliant yellow light. She blinked, and the face of her old neighbour Peg came into view. The mother approached with caution. Why are you here? she questioned. I'm just having a picnic with my husband. Come sit with us. Peg motioned to a blanket covered with a variety of food and beverages. The mother was feeling rather tired after her expedition, and despite not trusting the bog, she took a seat down on the ground. Where is your husband? The woman asked, popping a grape into her mouth. Oh, he's around. Peg snickered. Blood poured from the mouth of Devon's mother. She didn't notice. How's the food? Peg took a place opposite the woman. It's rather, it's rather addictive, the woman continued shoveling the food into her mouth, and more and more blood ran down her chin and covered her dress. Her belly growled. Agony. What's wrong? Peg asked with fake sincerity. My stomach, it's... The mother's stomach grew large as she began screaming in pain. I think, I think I'm having a baby, she screamed out. Oh, would you look at that? Jack, she's found her son. spring Jack loomed over the mother. With one glance at him, the world changed. No longer a picturesque meadow, 
the woman lay in a hellscape. Fire raged around her as the child within her begged to be freed. Do you like food? Jack asked from everywhere at once. The mother felt this not the time and not the place for such questions, but answered despite this. Of course, she sobbed. Do you feed your child? The fire roared with the wails of a million tortured souls. The screams were so loud that the woman's ears bled. I asked you a question. Jack placed his clawed fingers around the woman's head and forced her to stare upon him. No, she screamed as everything stopped. Now she sat in the immense opaque room, still in labour, but this wasn't at the forefront of her concerns. Where am I? she inquired, looking over to Peg, who was now dressed for a funeral. Welcome to Pandora's box, the origin and home to all that is evil. Enjoy living here. Peg winked as the mother's labour pains returned in full force. Her stomach tore open and out popped Devon covered in blood. He looked down at his mother in horror. Mother? He cried, kneeling to her side. His knees touched the ground. He found himself in the meadow. A bunny hopped past him, but his mother was gone. At the time, Devon could not make sense of what happened, but now he was married with a child of his own. He realised that the way his mother had treated him was wrong. To her, he was a possession, more akin to a doll than a child. She never fed him or allowed him to make friends or anything important to a child's development. The only reason he had survived so long was because Peg would sneak him a plate of food, a plate full of food each night. Of course, he believed this was his mother's doing, but when Peg and Jack adopted him, they explained it all. Devon didn't hate his mother, as he was sure there was some reasonable explanation why she was what she was, but as far as his daughter was concerned, her grandmother was Peg. And that's just how Peg had planned it to be. If you like this story and you want to see more stories, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell below to be notified of more videos that are coming. Follow me on Twitter, 66JJ99, and also follow me on my Wattpad to see the written versions of these stories, also 66JJ99. Um, I will see you next week and happy Easter.